We have come here collectively today to condemn the Manville Police Department. The Manville Police Department, in my opinion, is one of the most racist, corrupt departments in the state of Texas. Amen. What they did to these two respectable young black men is a disgrace to all of us as black people. These two brothers are the same type of brothers that we fight in our community to produce. Produce, produce, produce. Congratulations. You're a black man in America and you beat all of the odds. You've become somebody despite your circumstances. You went to college or you own a business or you're a successful tradesman. And now you are living the American dream. Most black men will never own a home in their lifetime or have even a lot of money to retire on. But that's not you. You're actually on your way. And you've now done well enough to buy yourself a brand new house. Congratulations again. You build yourself a brand new home in a city inside of the great state of Texas. You invite your homeboy over to celebrate. Your homeboy is a police officer. And while you're there just chilling in your new two-story house out by the poolside, you hear something weird. Aha, uh -huh, that's not a cell phone ringing, that's a doorbell ringing. And when you open the door, there's your neighbor, a beautiful white lady named Amanda. And she's so happy to see you and welcoming you to the neighborhood. And well, basically you've been knowing her for a while, but today she has some cupcakes for you and your friend. She walks into your house, takes off her clothes, and your boy is like, yo, man, what's like, what's going on with her? And you're like, nah, it's, it's all good, man. This, she's just like that. You go into the pool side and well, <laughs> The three of you, um, booty clap yourselves. <laughs> yeah, man, just booty clapping everywhere. But then the next week, something happens that's gonna change your entire life. The police show up within a few minutes. And you're going to jail for, for, for what? For what? For what? For what? Rewind! Black men have been facing these issues when it comes to white women for a long time. There's the Central Park Five, where guys lost a lot of their life for a false accusation of grape from a white woman. Then you also have in Florida, the Groveland Four, where four black men were wrongly accused of graping a white woman 70 years ago. And that was exonerated by a judge. But there's one problem. These guys were already dead. Yeah, for sure. And you know, this building behind me, this is the Lake County Museum right now. But back in the 1940s, it was the courthouse and it's where the case of the Groveland Four first was heard. Today, it's where family members celebrated as their innocence was returned to them. And in court, family members also broke down when the word came down. Those were tears after a judge agreed to dismiss the case against the Groveland. Four this morning, the young men, Charles Greenlee, Sam Shepard, Walter Irvin, and Ernest Thomas, had been accused back in 1949 of a woman. Thomas was even killed by a posse before he was even arrested. The rest eventually did get convicted at trial, despite evidence that authorities now say was fabricated and part of a conspiracy cooked up by then Lake County Sheriff Willis McCall. Then there's the sad case of Emmett Till, the young man who went to Mississippi from Chicago to visit his uncles and aunts. And basically he was accused of whistling at a white woman. But there's also one problem. Carolyn Bryant Dunham, the white woman who accused Emmett Till of making advances towards her has died. 14-year-old Emmett Till was kidnapped and brutally murdered by Bryant's then-husband and his half-brother in Mississippi in 1955 over the allegation. The two men were acquitted in his killing by an all-white jury, but later confessed in an interview. The case gained national attention after Emmett Till's mother allowed Jet Magazine to take and publish photos of her son's mutilated body in an open casket. The horrific image shocked the nation and served as the catalyst for the civil rights movement. Years after Till's death, Dunham admitted to fabricating parts of her story, although she was never charged with a crime.
It was false. The young man's body was so mutilated that it was disgusting. The image still permeates through the brains of people who were not even born in that generation. And then we have the case I just talked about in the beginning of Manville, Texas homeowner and resident John Marks and his friend, Freddie Douglas. Black man sees white neighbor after being falsely accused. That's right. John Marks on the left. Okay. There he is. 40 year old black man has filed civil rights lawsuit against the city of Manville, Texas and its police officers alleging he was falsely arrested for sexually assaulting his white neighbor. The lawsuit claims that on November 9, 2023, Marks and his friend, 43 year old Freddie Douglas Jr. in the center had consensual sex with Amanda Zarusinski. Freddie Douglas Jr. is a police officer in El Campo, Texas. And John Marks, age 40, had a consensual relationship, a sexual encounter with Amanda Zarusinski, a woman who lived nearby. And this was a chick that Mr. John Marks had been sleeping with for months. Ooh, the clapping sounds. <laughs> he had been clapping his cheeks. Okay. Now she came over and maybe, you know, felt bad about the fact that she was, you know, basically in a two plus one sum with somebody else. When she went to the police and filed these charges against these black men, these guys were arrested immediately. They were not interviewed or nothing. Of God, the beneficent, the merciful. We bear witness there's but one God to whom praise is due forever. We have come here collectively today to condemn the Manville Police Department. The Manville Police Department, in my opinion, is one of the most racist, corrupt departments in the state of Texas. Amen. What they did to these two respectable young black men is a disgrace to all of us as black people. These two brothers are the same type of brothers that we fight in our community to produce. These young brothers, they ain't not that young, but young enough. These are the kind of young men we inspire to produce from our community. And when they do everything right, when they follow the line, when they follow the law, they don't commit unlawful acts. When they're not criminals, all it takes is one white woman to say out of her mouth, I was by two black men at this police department. And then these cops never even questioned these two gentlemen. They never even interviewed these two gentlemen. I'm going to say it again. She came and called them and told them she was and they went and got arrest warrants for both men. These brothers never been in trouble, no criminal history. One, a police detective. You mean to tell me she come and say this about a police detective? And yet you don't even interview the man? You get a warrant for his arrest on the spot? Surely I don't believe had a black woman come up here and told them the two white men me. And one is a police detective and neither have a criminal history of violence or anything that they would go and process arrest warrants for him without ever interviewing both men. This police department and the chief should resign. He should never be allowed to be a chief in this city again. They conducted a Barney Fife investigation only after, only after they had arrested both men. Mr. John Marks was arrested on December 7, 2023 and charged with aggravated assault. Okay. Sec S E G Shawo. You know, stop the show. Shout out to YouTube. We can't really be too much honest. Aggregated kidnapping and felonies that could result from five to 99 years in prison. Mr. Douglas, who was a police detective in El Campo, was fired. But both of these guys were innocent. But here is an issue. On March 23rd, though, John Marks got some get back. They had camera evidence and stop the show. Guys, it's real important to get those cameras. And the camera evidence showed that the lady did this on her own. And once they reviewed the evidence four months later, you know what I'm saying? The district attorney issued a no bill verdict declining to indict each man. Basically, they saw her walking into the home with cupcakes 
with no signs of distress or hesitation, looking relaxed and engaging in friendly conversation. She later undressed and willingly joined the men in the pool and appeared to be enjoying herself, engaging in consensual sexual activity with John Marks and stop the show. And then later letting Freddie Douglas clap cheeks with no signs of resistance or discomfort. The camera showed Jorinsky moving freely throughout the house with multiple opportunities to leave if she had felt threatened or uncomfortable, including at one point when she was alone in the house while Marks and Douglas were outside in the pool. Now these guys are suing for a lot of money. Now I want to go back to what Mr. Quinell X, the activist said, that these are two black men that the community wants to produce and they have no crime and the Manville police is racist and corrupt. But there's always a crime that a lot of black men don't understand. Being a black man sleeping with white women. And of course, I know this is 2024. I know you guys don't want to talk about this, but you need to understand this. When you're a successful black man, nobody wants to take your word for it. Just look at Jonathan Majors. And I keep trying to preach this to black men. I keep trying to tell you you're not going to get a fair shake. And you, you typically never do. Again, he made a great point. If it was a black woman and two white men, neither one of these guys with a criminal record, would a black woman have gotten, you know, the police department to come out without any investigation and getting arrested? Absolutely not. And the white police officer wouldn't have never lost his job. But you got to understand how to protect yourself as a black man. Guys, under no circumstances should you be having a jump off sexual relationships with women, especially if they are white. You need to know this. Story time music. There was one time I was in Poland. Um, stop the show. Shout out to Dima because Dima was supposed to move to Poland when I was living there, but he, he just didn't. Um, but anyways, there was a white lady that lived uh, in my apartment complex. And I just happened to be going upstairs and, um, you know, she was drunk. The lady came into my house, opened the door and was trying to get me to take a shot of vodka. All right. My heart was pounding. Most of the guys that were there just couldn't understand it. And it was just me and her in the room. But she took that. I took that drink fast as hell. And I was like, listen, I got to go. You know, she left and everything. I, my heart skipped a beat. Not because, you know, she was trying to get me to drink something. It was just she's white. And if she says anything that I did, I'm in trouble. In a foreign country, they're going to definitely believe her over me. And you brothers need to understand that when you're living this life, you guys are black. You, you guys are black. And I don't know why you guys don't understand that. But even if you're not doing the wrong thing, all it takes for somebody to say you're doing the wrong thing and your whole life is ruined even after, you know, everything is resolved. This guy might never be able to go back to his job. So guys, think about this. It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Appreciate your fall that you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out.